If we go over to the IDE, I've already pasted in the code we just had in the PowerPoint slide. Let's think about how to turn this into a, a little bit more pseudo-y pseudocode. So first of all, we've got the greeting that's taking place here. What exactly was that? The greeting was, well, you're getting these things that will be coming for free, so you don't have to worry about that. But this right here, welcome to the game Hangman. I'm thinking of a word that is some digits long. So let's, let's do this. If we paste that right here. You're going to have to print out that. And let me just tab this over, noting that the tabs here are not Python tabs, but just to keep an outline here. You want to print this out. Also right here, that's four letters long. Right here, you don't really want four, but you want something to do with the length of the, the string that you're getting in here. It's basically that secret word, the length of the, the word. And you should know the syntax for doing this by now. And before that, it will be printing out something else. You don't have to worry. That's coming for free. The game itself, this is where it's really interesting. How are we going to construct this looping mechanism? You know from work so far in PSETs 1 and 2 that there are two main ways we can do looping. One is a for loop, the other is a while loop. For loops work really, really well if you already know a set period of time. So for example, in PSET 2, many people were using for loops, excuse me, while loops for doing um, the monthly calculations, the 12 times per year. And that's probably not a good way because you know there are 12 months in a year and you're going to do it 12 times. That's really what a for loop is for. However, in a case like this, we're going to play this game for how long? As long as the player has remaining guesses or as long as the player hasn't yet guessed the word. So as long as those two conditions are holding, you want to play the game. That's really what while loops are made for. So you really should be using a while loop here. So the game itself, we want to play that while, and let me give these conditions here. Um, while either the player has remaining guesses or while the player hasn't, let me return here, yet guessed the word. Now, this idea about having remaining guesses, we haven't dealt with that yet. Right? There's no variable yet in the code or in any of the helper code before that's been keeping track of guesses. And that's because that's part of Hangman, frankly. The, the, the game, the person's making guesses, it's your job to count them. This is a really simple counter that we've seen many times before. And that's something you should really be declaring up here earlier on. Um, you know, some variable to count guesses. Now... The other way you can do this, a way that I prefer actually, and it's the same, is a variable that um, counts mistakes. So if you've got eight guesses, or if you've got more than zero guesses left, you continue. If you've made eight mistakes, or if you made less than eight mistakes, you continue. Different ways of looking at the same thing. So you're going to have to make some variable up there. Okay, the second part of this statement here is that the player hasn't yet guessed the word. We've got a function for that. That function is, of course, the first one we did. Where is that at here? Um, yeah, is word guessed. This returns true if the word is guessed, false if it's otherwise. So that's a really simple call right here. Um, so while is word guessed is false, you want to keep going, as long as they still have guesses. So very important point here. The way that you structure this looping, it can be done in two general ways. And this doesn't have to do with a for loop. In terms of a while loop, you have to think about how you're going to break out of that while loop. The way I've just written it right here, if we structure it so that these Boolean statements are inside the while loop itself, in the heading of the while loop, when, let's say, either, either the player has remaining guesses. So when that becomes false, they don't have any remaining guesses, the while loop ends and you're kicked out of the loop. Or if the player has guessed the word, then this becomes, I guess, false and then you get kicked out of there. Another way of doing this, and I think, at least for me, this was a, a easier way of thinking about it, is you don't have to actually deal with those conditions in the while statement itself. Instead, what you can do inside the code, inside the while loop, is you can have break statements where you can be checking, for example, 
is the number of guesses greater than zero? If so, that's great. But what you should really be checking is if the number of guesses is less than one or equal to zero, you got to break out of there right away and end the game. Same way, if the player has actually guessed the word, then you've got to break out of whatever you're doing and get out of there. So that's an important thing. You can do it either way you like. I'll just con continue doing the code as I've, I've done it here. But remember, you have that flexibility. So let's continue on here. Let's say you've got a while loop set up. You want to first report the remaining guesses, the available letters, and then prompt for input. So those are all things that are happening here, right? We've got this. Let me just copy this over here. And let's, ah, wrong one, right here. Let me go down here a little bit, paste that in. So how are you going to report the number of guesses left? Well, that's pretty simple. You've got a variable that's keeping track of guesses, so you're going to just print that out. That's a print statement. Available letters, this is also a print statement, but it's making use of the function, of course, that we had up here, which is get available letters. So you're going to call that. Very simple. And But what are you going to call it on, though? It's this thing called letters guessed. Where does letters guessed come from? We talked about this in the previous walkthroughs, but this is something that you are going to have to implement in this code. So right now, inside Hangman, when the player is making a guess, that's the third thing here, I guess. When they're making a guess, you've got to record that. And how would you record characters? You could either do that in a string, or you could do it in a list. I think lists are more efficient, so I'd propose you make a list. So right here, you have to declare the letters guessed. And you can make that a list, a string, just work on that and think about that a little bit. But when you get to this point, when the players actually guess something, you're going to have to add that on to letters guessed somehow. OK, so you've got that. You've done this little step, so let me get rid of that. OK, and then you've got to evaluate the input. And this is where the, and I should say one more thing right here. During your while loop, you're always going to be doing this step until you break out of the loop. And these numbers that you're reporting, this report, and then, well, the prompt here, you're not going to have that. They're going to put it in. But this is always going to be continuous. So you probably want to keep that near the top of your loop so that always comes out. OK, so evaluating the input. Three things can possibly happen. Remember we talked about this. Yeah, the letter is in the word, or the letter has already been guessed, or the letter is not in the word. Let's forget right now about this case where they make an invalid input. We'll just get rid of that and not worry about that. So this really sounds like one of those nested conditionals, doesn't it? If something happens, do something. If something else happens, do something else. If another thing happens, do something else. And these three things that happen are all independent. Excuse me. They're not independent. But the things that happen, only one of them can happen. So right here, let's do this one. So if, if player guesses a letter in the word, then you want to do some things. Well, what do you want to do? Several things, right? You want to, you got to add that letter to letters guessed. You've got to report to them what we have here, something like good guess, right? Let's put that in here. Report something like good guess, and then this thing is going to be that function that we already have that returns this. And I think there's one other thing you should probably think about doing right here. You might, depending on how you've done this, but if they have guessed all letters, then get out of here. You want to end the game. So you can put that here, you can put it anywhere, but I think it makes sense here in the context of them having just guessed a letter that actually is in the word. It's possible that that could be the last letter that they needed to guess. Seems like it makes sense here. So let's think of the other case here where a player guesses a letter that's already guessed. What do you want to do? Let's put this if here. Um, now, probably shouldn't be if, right? Because we know that the first statement, if this one holds, then this can't possibly be true. And this other one cannot possibly be true. You want to prompt them for a new one. So in that case, we really want to use this 
else if, else if construction. So else if this has happened, you want to do something. And this is probably the easiest one because you don't have to actually increment letters guessed. It's the same letter. You just go back into that main loop. So this one I'll leave to you. And then the last one here is if these top two haven't happened, otherwise you want to do something um, when the player has not guessed the letter in the word. What do you do then? Well, you obviously have to increment, um, add that letter. You know what? I'll just copy this right here to save the time. And you want to make a, a short apology, right? Let me do this right here and let's just check. So yeah, right here, oops, that word, that's not my word. And then you want to show them the word that they've already had. So let's go right here. And then you want to continue on from there. So what happens when you've run out of guesses? How are you going to do that? You're going to have to think about ways of coding this. There might be conditions here where you are missing something right now, perhaps having to do with the number of guesses. So which ones count as guesses? This one should count as a guess. You're going to have to somehow increment that. This should also count as a guess, even if it's wrong. You might want to check, is the uh, remaining guesses still greater than zero? So there's a lot of work still left for you here. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to come to the forum, Facebook, wherever, and ask them there. Um, you're almost done, so hang in there and see you in PSET 4.